Hey guys, me a junkie here, not my regular persona. I'm here as Mike, a casual movie goer and yeah, screw it, I'm just me. <laughs> okay, so I will be getting that review out soon. It's just right now I have some stuff I need to work on in my house. So currently this is going to be my update. So I want to go see X-Men First Class a little while ago, and let me just start off by saying, one, spoilers, and two, I'm not a fan of the X-Men movies, really, yeah, they're fun kind of action, but they're not X-Men movies, they're horrible portrayals, the characters suck usually, and eh, I could deal without them, but, 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 haha, <laughs> always gotta remember the good stuff. But there was X-Men Origins Wolverine, which, while not the best, especially because it really ruined Wolverine for me. Oh, God. While it did that, it still had Wolverine in it. So it's probably my favorite out of all the ones that were out. Then X-Men First Class came out. It has now taken a spot. I do think that it's the best X-Men film out so far. But it does have its issues. Alright, start off with one continuity problems aside. I didn't like all the characters. I, you know what? No, no, scratch that. There, there is one continuity character that I gotta call out on because he annoys me. Azazel. Now, spoilers. Azazel is the father of Nightcrawler, in case you couldn't get it from the fact that he's a blue... Sorry. Nightcrawler is a blue version of Azazel. With the same powers! Okay. The deal is that he fathered Nightcrawler with Mystique, so while this is a new imagining, this is going to be a whole new trilogy, it's not really connected to the original three X-Men films, I really wonder how they're going to play that. If they're going to still introduce Nightcrawler eventually, and how they're going to play that off. I don't know, but it's kind of interesting to me. So, the only reason why I think Azazel was there was because one of the story writers was Brian Singer, the director of X2, and if you know X2, that's when Nightcrawler was in there doing his shoom, 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 kill, kill, assassination, teleport, teleport thing, which really, it was interesting, but it was a nice one-time thing. The fact that that's how Azazel fights in X-Men First Class kind of ruins it. Kinda? No, actually, it sucks after the first time. Because it's really interesting. It's the first time you see it, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, dude, that's awesome. Dude, we've seen it. Can you do something else? But, I digress. The only other character that I really had a problem with was Charles Xavier. Now, besides the fact that I'm not really a fan of James McAvoy, really I'm not. He played one thing that he's really known for, which was and wanted, and that failed. I'm sorry, but that was like Robin in Batman and Robin. Wine, wine, complain, complain, bitch, bitch. I really didn't like how they played him off. He was arrogant. He was smug. He was a hypocrite. He was everything Charles Xavier wasn't, and it's a supposed deal that he's supposed to be a growing character. Like, he grows from, essentially, I'm going to say this right now, the gist I got of Charles Xavier was he was a combination of a frat boy. Now, note you're not a fraternity brother, because if there are people who act accordingly and not stupid, I don't mind, but a frat boy and the doctor from Doctor Who. Which is a terrifying combination. Ugh. But 
Let me explain. First off, just the British accent. Why? Charles Xavier is an American. Yes, he went over to England for his... But to get a British accent like that and use it for the entire... Why? No, no, why? It was obnoxious and annoying. And it was a type of overblown English accent that... It's what we as Americans think English people sound like. Well, you know what? Actually, no. James McAvoy is a Scot. He's Scottish. So the fact that he's making that accent really just grates on me. Because it's like, oh, God, stop saying stuff like Charles Xavier wouldn't in an English voice. It's obnoxious and annoying, and it sounds like you're just trying to get laid all the time. Which he pretty much is. His character pretty much goes around for the first act of the film going, Hey, you're like, mutations, glorious, ah, oh, you love it, sexy, you wanna go to bed with me? Eh. The second act, he actually gets sort of serious and doesn't act like a total dimwit when he realizes that crap's gonna go down. Maybe I have to act a little bit more mature, but I'm still gonna be a hypocrite and stupid. There's this whole scene where he meets Beast, and I call bullshit on this scene. I purposely think he tried to out Beast as a mutant. Here's why. Now, spoiler. You know, when he first meets Beast, you know, Beast is working in Unit X, you know, working in a science lab, and his boss doesn't know he's a mutant. So he eventually... So when he first meets him, he's like, hey, you tell you about a mutant? He's like, nope. Then his boss goes, hey, well, you're a mutant? Yeah. Why'd you tell me? You didn't ask? If, Wolf, if Xavier was able to instantly tell he's a mutant, which I guess had to be reading his mind to know he's a mutant, I'm sorry, but, well, but Charles Xavier does not have, oh, you're a mutant, telling abilities. He doesn't have mutant sensing abilities. He doesn't. Okay, that's a whole nother character. That's a whole nother couple of characters. But, so, he should be able to tell that, you know, Hank McCoy was not okay with being a mutant. So, he goes, Oh, I'm so sorry. Dude, you're not sorry. I, I did not believe that I'm so sorry bullshit. No, no, you are not sorry. You wanted to out him as mutant because you're a dick. <sighs> Add in the fact that he does this whole, oh, you're a glorious thing. Hey, you're perfect the way you are as a mutant. Raw, raw. I love the one scene where, and once again, spoilers, people. Now, they're going to be in here a lot, where Mystique, who obviously has grown up feeling a lot of problems concerning her appearance, seeing as how she's blue, again, I guess, kind of spiky, I, I don't know what that is on her skin, goes up to Xavier and goes, oh, would you go out with me? It's like, I, I, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, I'm working on something this way. And then she goes, but I mean, when I look like this. And he takes a look at her. And she's in her blue form and everything. He's like, oh, um, you mean like that? Uh, sorry, I, I can't think of you like that. You're, you're like a sister to me. Go away, that freak. Uh, I Even I felt the douche on that. Which, this is bad considering even another character did that. Beast did that. This whole other thing concerning going like, I will see you in your human form is beautiful. Your human form is beautiful. Not this mutant form, not your natural form. This form that you take, that's not natural. That's beautiful. Douche. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't, if I don't, I like the villain more. I like Magneto more. 
But, admittedly, this is probably some stuff that leads to, you know, Mystique going with Magneto because Magneto's like, oh, hey, you okay the way you are. Be mutant, be proud. Uh, okay, we, we get it, this is about discrimination, but the whole gay pride comment thing there, I'm not even going to make it because it's too easy. But yeah, now admittedly the designs for the characters that weren't really, you know, all the character designs pretty much worked for me. They actually seemed like proper designs. The costumes, I mean, just how they had the characters look, act, everything, it was great. The only, the only person I had a problem with was Sebastian Shaw. And that's because, you know, I was used to the Victorian slick back hair, mind chops, you know, not, not, not Kevin Bacon, but Kevin Bacon's cool. He, he played the role and he played it well. But, God, I, I, I'm sorry, I just can't get over James McAvoy. I hate him. Um, I guess... I guess the only other thing that I have to state on characters, I have, I have two more things. Uh, one, January Jones, you know, Emma Frost, I'll agree with Spoonie, you know, the, that guy with the glasses.com Spoonie. It was bland, it was stupid, and there was nothing there. It's like, yeah, she's going around in a bra and panties. I, I got nothing out of it. I'm sorry, but <laughs> that that character was just so bland. I got nothing out of it. And Mystique. This was interesting for Mystique. She was... <laughs> I hate to say it, but she was a good girl. Yeah, she was a little... You know, angry at times, but understandably so. But she was a believable character. She was this mutant whose body was blue. She had yellow eyes. She was pretty much one of the most just isolated characters. And then when Charles Xavier, who is essentially her brother, goes, Oh, I don't really care about you that much. I'm obviously being a hypocritical bastard compared to the way I was when I was a kid. When, when he does that, it just ruins her. And you can see this development. And it's a proper good development. It is not a development like what happens with Xavier. And, and admittedly though, the development that happened with Angel sucked as well. Um, most of the characters' development kind of sucked. Beast, mm, believe. Well, actually, no. It was only those who really that sucked. Beast's was believable. Magneto never really had any development because you could always tell he was going to be a villain in the end. Not just because he was a villain, but because of his actions previous in the film. That was great. Plus, I love the fact that they didn't, that we weren't able to do the whole. You can tell he's evil. I, are you listening to him? <laughs> thing because all the evil he did was when he wasn't with the X Men. So then, when he eventually did join the X Men, he never did really anything evil. So they never had any reason to truly question him. Okay, the scene with the barbed wire was kind of bad, but seriously, he didn't kill them. But. I, I'm talking way too much about the characters. All right, on the plot. Oh, the plot. You know what? I'm about the 15 minute mark, so hey, my next, I'll put in, yeah, I'll do a next video, and then I'll explain everything there. Peace, guys.